Hello. Before I start, I just want to say that before I usually prepare to do these videos and upload them to YouTube, I, being the actor that I am, will literally write out a script, um, literally word for word exactly what I want to say in my video, and then I'd devote that script that I made to complete memory. And therefore, I'd be completely prepared, I'd have all of the resources I'd need for my video, and, um, it's, it'll, my videos usually turn out somewhat clean. Um, however, this time, I'm doing something a little different. Um, I have nothing prepared, I didn't write anything, and I'm simply just speaking, as cliche as it may sound, I'm just simply speaking my mind, and I'm really just being sort of spontaneous with this, which I think, um, it's not a bad thing, I actually think it's very significant, it's very applicable to the topic I'll be talking about today, which is Fromm's, Eric Fromm's, um, concept of having and being in everyday, or in daily experience, um, which he discusses in his book called To Have or To Be, which we, we being, um, my class, at my high school, I'm in a, I'm currently in a psychology course dedicated to the works and the ideas of the psychologist Eric Fromm, and um, we've read some ex we've read some excerpts from To Have or To Be, and more specifically, I'd like to talk about having and being, living in the having and the being mode, um, as it is applied to learning, because I am a student after all, and so with that, I guess I'll begin. So, Fromm says that students that that learn in the having mode will, you know, they'll come to class, they'll have their notebooks, their pencils, and they'll take notes, they'll listen to the lecturer, they'll take notes, they'll um, retain all this information, and then they will go home and they'll memorize all of it just so that they could they can pass the test. Kind of like me writing out my script for these videos and memorizing it. Um, actually much like that, um, it's scary that I can make that connection right now, but, um, basically these, these students who are living in the having mode, you know, they're, they're, they're receiving all this information, they're, they're getting all of these, all of the means to, um, to pass the test, but they remain strangers to the person teaching them. Um, they don't know who their teacher is, they don't really care about the material, they're not finding meaning or significance, um, in the material that they're learning, they're just trying to pass the test. And, um, yeah, he says the content, the content does not become part of their own individual system of thought, enriching and, 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 um, and widening them. Um, but then he says that the person, but before I talk about the being mode, I just, when I read that, I, um, I couldn't help but think, wow, because I could picture myself in not all of my classes, but in um, about two or three of my classes, I could picture me learning in the having in the having mode. Um, more specifically, my science and my math classes. I you know I could I could memorize I could memorize um, the information for the test, but come to you know two to three weeks a month after that test, I probably wouldn't be able to tell anyone what I had learned um, in those chapters, which, um, according to Fromm, I mean, it's not a good, it's not a bad thing, it's just, um, it's a very different experience than if you are learning in the being mode. And um, he says that the student who is learning in the being mode listens, they hear, um, they hear, and most importantly, they receive and they respond in an active, productive way. Um, when one, when, per when someone's learning in the being mode, they are, like Fromm says, he's, he, they're actively engaging in the material, and they're they're trying to find significance um, significance in the material so that they can better apply it to their life. And um, another thing he talks about in this book is having and being while conversing. And I thought this was, I thought this was really interesting because um, I mean I'm talking to people every day, so I could really apply that to my everyday life. And he says that. Um, when people are conversing, they don't, you know, they don't have, they don't come with a, you know, a set list of questions, which they're, um, 
they're going to talk about. They simply a conversation is basically like an exchange of di like an exchange of dialogue. Um, and so you know you listen to someone and then you respond to them. You're actively engaged in this conversation. So why why not apply this same um, the same focus and the same um, enthusiasm kind of to your learning. Um, I don't know, I find this concept very, it's interesting, it's very interesting. Like I said, I can, I can see that in some classes I definitely learn in the having mode, and in some classes I definitely learn in the being mode. Um, don't get me wrong, making the grade, I, I mean to me, making the grade is important, but is it, is it more important than really achieving meaningful, um, meaningful things in that class, especially, um, me going off to college next year, and college is not, I mean, college is very expensive, I want to make sure that I'm getting my money's worth of education, and, um, that I'm really, I want to make sure that I'm really gaining things from my classes, and I feel that, um, just by reading, by reading from, I'm, I am one step ahead of the students who aren't reading him, um, because I, I, you know, I can't, I can now notice, oh, Michael, you're learning in the having mode, you need to, you know, kind of switch it off, or switch it to the being mode, um, yeah, I feel like, just, feel incredibly unfortunate to have, to, I feel incredibly fortunate to be studying from, at my school, and, um, I feel that, applying his methods or at least attempting to apply them in my everyday life will um really make my life more worthwhile so i'd encourage my viewers to do the same and hopefully you see the same significance in it as i did thanks for watching